It's an epic clash bearing all the hallmarks of a far-fetched Hollywood screenplay. Rival billionaires duking it out among the stars with nothing less at stake than the future direction of human civilization itself. In reality, of course, the 21st century space race happening right now between Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is a slow-paced, respectful and really quite nerdy affair. But as ever more advanced rockets leave the launch pads of both companies, it's certainly worth checking in on how their approaches, technology and funding differs. So today, we're looking into the difference between SpaceX and Blue Origin. The battle for celestial supremacy between Tesla founder Musk and Amazon's Bezos is not some crude Freudian rocket measuring contest. Both men are, in their own ways, engineers, problem solvers to the core. For both of them, the quest to venture into space is a solemn attempt to tackle the most urgent challenges threatening humanity. They just happen to differ on the exact nature of the problem they're setting out to solve. For Elon Musk, it's all about guaranteeing humanity's future survival by setting up a backup civilization on Mars. The billionaire has rather chillingly noted on more than one occasion that humanity should make every effort to get a Mars base established before World War III, because such a conflict or an entirely different and unforeseeable natural catastrophe could set scientific progress back centuries or even millennia. Jeff Bezos' vision, by contrast, boils down to his belief that mankind will do fine, but planet Earth itself will simply run out of energy. A regular human, he tells us, uses 97 watts of power just as part of regular metabolic processes. But humans in the developed world, with our lavish lifestyles and technological gizmos, burn through a remarkable 10,500 watts per person every day. With the global population likely to hit 9 billion in not very much time at all, something has to give. Or as Bezos himself puts it, we get to choose. Do we want stasis and rationing, or do we want dynamism and growth? Naturally, as we run out of room on Earth, the only way is up. They both agree on that. But here, Blue Origin's vision differs very markedly from Musk's Martian ambitions, and Bezos isn't afraid to say so publicly. My friends who want to move to Mars, he teases, do me a favor and go live on the top of Mount Everest. Live there for a year first and see if you like it, because it's a garden paradise compared to Mars. So it's fair to assume he probably won't be booking a flight to SpaceX's first Mars colony, optimistically planned to be up and running by 2050. Indeed, Bezos' ultimate aim seeks a dramatic break with the traditional so-called planetary chauvinism of those who can only envisage landlocked colonies anchored to the rocky surfaces of distant worlds. His vision is more inspired by the late 60s and early 70s work of physicist Gerard O'Neill. The plan? For human beings to ultimately leave planet Earth and expand almost limitlessly into outer space. But instead of occupying pokey geodesic domes or Martian subsurface caverns suggested by the more feasible SpaceX scenarios, Blue Origin is betting the future of mankind will reside on vast floating space stations. As many as a trillion human beings could comfortably live and thrive in these artificial gravity utopias with, as the Amazon chief rather lyrically puts it, a thousand Mozarts or a thousand Einsteins emerging as a natural consequence. What does the architecture look like when it no longer has a primary purpose of shelter? Jeff Bezos has speculated in one of his more expansionist moments. We'll find out. Bezos can mock Musk's Martian dream as much as he wants, but for now at least SpaceX has the bragging rights and a clear lead in the tech department. Just this month, a SpaceX rocket docked with the International Space Station as production of the much-anticipated Starship at Elon Musk's Boca Chica shipyard continues to ramp up a pace, ready for those hotly anticipated initial Mars missions later in this decade. It's also been a landmark year for Starlink, Musk's orbital satellite broadband provider, with well over 700 satellites already in orbit and as many as 120 manufactured every month set to join them. Blue Origin has, embarrassingly you might say, not even put a rocket into orbit yet, contenting itself thus far with minor suborbital experiments and preparing for its promised space tourism project, New Shepard. Still, in fairness, Blue Origin has won the coveted NASA contract to design and build the landing module for its Artemis program, set to put the first woman on the moon in the year 2024. And as exciting as big heavy rockets and moonwalks are, perhaps the most instructive way of framing the differences between SpaceX and bitter rival Blue Origin is to look at how they're funded. Elon Musk made his first fortune in the early 2000s when PayPal was sold to eBay. Musk walked away from that deal with a cool $180 million. That's peanuts, however, in terms of space program budget, not least when you're also simultaneously inventing the mass-market electric car. Musk's dealings with Tesla have made him substantially wealthier in the intervening years, but SpaceX's early failures, including three bruising failed launches, threatened to tank his spacefaring dream altogether. 
ever the hustler, Musk managed to win rocket contracts from NASA and other parties worth billions which kept the company alive, if only by a whisker. But to this day, funding is an ever-present problem at SpaceX. The Starlink broadband satellite program, it's worth remembering, is partly up there to improve internet access for less advantaged populations, but mostly to generate revenue that can finance the ongoing Mars mission. By contrast, the financial position of the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos, is, well, quite healthy since you ask. Every year or so, Bezos sells a negligible proportion of Amazon shares and donates the funds to Blue Origin. This year, for an illustration, he parted with just 1.8% of Amazon shares and raised a whopping $3.1 billion for his rocket scientists to splurge however they see fit. This funding model goes some way to explaining why Blue Origin can appear to lag behind its rival SpaceX. Where Elon Musk is constantly chasing contracts and working under intense pressure to generate revenue for his outer space adventures, Bezos enjoys the luxury of time. Let's imagine the tortoise and the hare fable. Elon Musk is the glossy, agile hare, pounding up the metaphorical road with all those glossy televised rocket launches and viral gags on Twitter. The tortoise, Jeff Bezos, is clearly some way behind, but is making up ground steadfastly. As it happens, the Latin motto of Blue Origin, Gradatim Ferociter, quite literally means step by step ferociously. So will Bezos the tortoise ultimately romp home? We may know soon. Just like SpaceX and its Starlink project, Blue Origin has recently been granted approval to launch its own orbital broadband network. Known as Project Kuiper, the $10 billion exercise sets out to launch around 6,000 satellites into orbit. The crucial difference is, Amazon already wields substantial power over the internet through its Gigantai Web Services division. So it's not too hard to imagine the project taking off with superior vertical integration and on-the-ground support that Starlink can only dream of. And there you have it. Two men and two companies with very different ideas. One wants to go to Mars and build bases, the other expand infinitely into the twinkling void on silently twirling space stations. Musk the hare presently boasts a commanding lead, but we can't write off Jeff Bezos and his pretty much limitless capacity for shelling out.